Hey guys, welcome to our retro review series. Uh, this is kind of something we started here uh, a while back. Uh, we did one video uh, on a uh, MTH C44-9 uh, quite a while back and uh, hadn't done another video since, so I decided to bring this series back um, while we wait for some of the new stuff to come in and as kind of things change a little bit uh, where uh, I'm not going to be getting as much new stuff. So we're going to kind of be doing some neat little reviews on some uh, older models that are in my fleet. Um, so basically how this is going to work with these retro reviews, uh, these are going to consist of uh, older locomotives and rolling stock. Uh, just for example, like uh, like this guy right here. So, um, so yeah, basically it's going to be uh, older locomotives and rolling stock. Now, these uh, pieces may or may not have changes that have happened to them, uh, upgrades, uh, different couplers, uh, maybe changes to the headlights, maybe they've had decoders added, stuff like that. Um, and they may also have some damage that was not present on the model when it was new. So I just want to stress stress that part um, when, I, when I do these reviews, that uh, they may have some imperfections and whatnot that uh, we're not present at the time I purchased these models uh, several years ago. Uh, they've some of them's got some mileage on them, and they've got some uh, they got some character to them. But anyway, uh, uh, we hope you enjoy this uh, series. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the let's get to the uh, models that we'll be reviewing. Hope you guys enjoy the series. <music> Hey guys, welcome to a, another retro review. Um, uh, I've only done one of these in the past, but uh, we're going to do another one right here, and we're going to focus on a really cool engine that uh, Atherin brought out uh, several years ago. Uh, this, of course, being the GP60M uh, from their Ray to Roll line, and uh, you can see right there we got the uh, GP60B in the box. So uh, this is the uh, this is the A unit, if you want to call that, the GP60M. Uh, very cool locomotive Atherin uh, made in the past. Uh, I believe these were first introduced in 2003. Um, basically what it is, this is the uh, former rail power product shell and uh, chassis uh, on, the, on this unit. Um, Atherin acquired, acquired that company uh, back in the early 2000s, and they started re releasing uh, uh, locomotives and rolling stock from that from that tooling. Uh, this is one of them. Actually, this this believe it or not, it's the first uh, of those locomotives from that line. So uh, yeah, really really cool engine. So let's take a look at a, at some of the details on this thing. Uh, you know what? First of all, let's take a look at the box since GP60 B is in this. So just real quick to kind of show you. How they come packaged. Uh, they come in this really nice box right here, blue and yellow box right here with the Atherin Raider logo. Nice protective clamshell, uh, protects the uh, model inside. Um, again, should protect the model very nicely in storage and transport. Of course, you see uh, the little DCC ready sticker. Now, these. Uh, these engines back in the day uh, came with the uh, nine-pin JST quick plug. Uh, it was a pretty revolutionary design uh, for its time. Uh, Atherin developed this alongside Digitrax um, as an easy, quick way to to uh, install decoders. And actually, uh, what's interesting is uh, these engines have two ways you can put uh, decoders in. They, of course, they have the nine-pin JST plug, but they also have what was then the standard eight-pin plug. Uh, which was a much older, which was an older design. Um, basically, you would have a wire harness with eight pins, and it would plug into the board itself. Um, so, it's actually a pretty cool design. You can actually do either or um, with it uh, with these engines. So, uh, it's pretty neat. So, yeah, just kind of wanted to show you that right quick. So, let's take a look at the model that we got out, and we will take a look at the GP60B later uh out of the box so let's start here at the front 
Of course, you got your uh, snow plow right here. You got your ditch lights. And actually, this one here it is missing a lens. Uh, I'll have to get a... Um, I'll have to get a uh, another lens and stick in it, but that's not a big deal. Um, you got your McHenry knuckle couplers right here. Um, you got wire grab irons right here. Looks very, very good. You got your print number, number boards. Now, these don't light up. These are just uh, uh, decals on the, on the front here. And I accidentally hit that with my screwdriver. Uh, nice looking windshield. Two-piece windshield right here. Uh, no separately applied windshield wipers on this model. Uh, this is this was kind of your basic uh, mid-range locomotive for from the uh, let's say early 2000s. Let's say about 03 when these things were introduced, all the way up to about 2015, 16-ish. I believe was the last time these engines appeared. Um, got your uh, silicon handrails right here. Looks very very good. We'll uh, come around to the side of this engine right here. And I'll zoom in real quick on that. We'll start here at the front. Uh, there's your Blumberg, uh, Bloomberg, Blumberg, if I can say it right, truck design right here. Looks very good. Nice uh, silver side frames here. Looks good. Paint looks very good on this engine. The, the this uh, this version uh, the Santa Fe Warbonnet scheme is not an easy scheme to replicate in model form, uh, but this this looks pretty good right here. Uh, uh, even for a budget budget line model like this one is or was, um, got your cab sunshades right here. You got uh, your antennas right up here on top. Now I do have a, an older set. Um, of these GP GP60Ms from actually that first year they came out. Um, so there may be some slight changes to this model that the other one doesn't have, but um, we, we might get into that later. Uh, when we Actually, when we test this out, because the, the other two engines are actually out there. So we might run, put these two side by side to kind of show you some of the slight improvements they made. So... Um, like I said, there's your antennas right here on top, cab sunshade, cab windows, uh, your road number, uh, Santa Fe 160. Again, the war bonnet, the curve on the where the red and the silver meet looks really, really nice. Um, now, this particular scheme, this is the, uh, I guess, the reinvented version of the war bonnet, if you want to call it. They call this a super fleet scheme. Um, this first appeared in uh, 19... 89, I believe, with a pair of FP45s, and uh, it actually ended up being a test scheme, and um, they then fully introduced it with these locomotives in 1990, so uh, it's a really, really nice scheme, very striking scheme. I really like this one a lot. Uh, we'll come down here to the side. Of course, you got your fuel tank right here. Um, really not a whole heck of a lot in the details, but again, you know, for the time it was produced, um, and the fact that it was a budget line model, you really wouldn't expect a lot of detailing right here. So, uh, really not much to look at, but look at, but very, very solid looking, uh, piece here. Um, the Santa Fe lettering and logo looks very, very nice again. And also, uh, you might notice too, we got uh, black and metal fans right here. These, uh, radiator cooling fans are blackened out. Now, uh, that's actually something that, that did appear with the uh, initial release of the GP60Ms back in 2003, uh, but not all of these engines had this feature. Uh, some of them had black and metal fans, but as you'll see with the older model that I have, uh, the grills on the radiator fans are actually painted silver like the rest of the car body. So some of them had this uh, blackened out feature and some of them didn't. So it uh, kind of makes them stand out that way. But you, here's your uh, dynamic brake fan right here. Uh, again, the grill's painted silver on that one. <clears throat> your uh, three-chime air horn right here. Exhaust hatch. Uh, now, these models don't have see-through grills on them. Um, but a lot of nice depth right here. It does look very, very nice. Again, like I said, uh, paint decaling looks very, very crisp on this model. Handrails look very nice. 
I'll zoom that out and tilt that down just a little bit where we can get a better look at the back end of this guy. Come around to the back. Again, you got nice grab irons right here. Looks very good. There's your headlight. Now, also with these older engines, uh, they did not use... They, they had not yet switched to LEDs uh, for their locomotives. They were still using these one and a half volt uh, incandescent bulbs. Um, I, they produce a very nice light. However, their their lifespan is relatively short. They are kind of prone to burning out uh, spontaneously, so or sporadically, I mean. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the only downside of these bulbs. But actually, they do produce a very nice light. Um, even though, like I said, their lifespan is short and they're not as bright as LEDs, uh, at least in my opinion, but, uh, still look very, very nice. So we'll look at the rear end here again, pretty plain Jane, no, uh, no MU hoses or coupler cut levers or anything like that. Uh, it does have little starter points here where you can drill that out, put those things on, um, Got your McHenry knuckle coupler on there. Come around to the other side. Pretty much same story, second verse. Paint layering looks really, really good on this engine. Trucks look good. Fuel tank's very solid in the air tank detail. There's the front truck. Uh, front truck. Right there. Details look very good. Uh, the shock absorber brake cylinder and uh, this little piece right here all separately applied looks very nice got your uh, cab windows here looks very nice there's a sunshade right there of course you got grab irons on the nose right here looks very good and we come back around to the front so yeah they're very solid looking engines um they're they're great for uh uh sort of the beginner hobbyist if if you want to for them to get kind of get something really nice to run uh very solid looking model so um that's kind of going to be the little tour of the gp60m let's get the gp60b out and we'll uh we'll take a quick look at it okay we're back now and we got the gp60b out and uh, we'll just kind of take a quick tour of it um aside from the fact that this engine doesn't have a cab there's really not much different from the uh the gp60m or the a unit if you want to call it that uh, but just real quick, grab arms look very good. Uh, you notice the grab arms here are highlighting yellow. Looks very, very nice. Of course, there's your headlight right there again. Uh, one, half in, uh, one and a half volt incandescent bulbs. Looks very good. There's your road number. You can see uh, very nicely done right there on the front. Again, McHenry knuckle coupler. Um, there's the drill starter points for the MU hoses and your all that uh, other than that it's pretty much plain not much detail right here on this engine come down the side real quick there's your dynamic brake housing right there looks very very good got a little grab iron right there there's your uh, exhaust hatch right here um, little Grill details right here looks very good. Come around here to the back to your cooling fans again, just like the GP60M. The GP60B has these blackened out fan grills over the radiator cooling fans. Looks really, really nice. We'll kind of spin that around, let you guys get a look at that right there. So, there's a look at that. Looks very good. Truck detail again looks very nice on this model. Uh, again, separately applied brake cylinder, shock absorber, um, little hanger right here, looks really good. Uh, you got a little sight gauge right there, looks really nice. Fuel tank, fuel tank's, like I said, solid. There's not any uh, much in the way of detail, but it's still a very, very solid piece. Uh, remember, this is essentially early 2000s. Um, this is essentially the same as the early 2000s release, the 2003 release. Um, a good budget line engine. Um, so, not a whole lot in the way of details. So, 
Uh, we'll come around here to the back and get a little closer look at it. Again, nice looking grab arms right here. You can see I blackened out fan a little better. Again, rear pilot here. Not no uh, no real details to speak of. Although you do have these little uh, starter points for the uh, MU hoses. There's your McHenry coupler. Again, looks good. And the other side, pretty much same story. Second verse. Looks very very good. Uh, really cool engines. Um, now. The only other company to make this these models, these particular models, um, was Fox Valley Models. Um, now theirs is a far more detailed, uh, kind of more upper end model than the Ather model. But like I said, if you want a really good solid model of these things, uh, the, if you can find them for relatively cheap, I know... Uh, if you look on sites like eBay and stuff like that, some of these are going for like crazy money. Um, the, these things new are right around $100 a piece. Uh, I think these, I think at the time I, we got these, um, they were 100 the, this engine was 116 and I think that might have been the same for this one. But uh, usually if you can find for right around $100, that's about, that's about max what they're, what they're worth. Um, at, at least in my opinion. Um, so, uh, but yeah, very, very nice engines. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of take a flight over the top of these two where you guys can kind of get an overview of them. So, uh, hang on just a second. We'll be right back. Okay. So real quick, we'll take a flight over these two right here. We'll just slowly scan over the top of them. There's the exhaust hatch on that. And, uh, before I forget right there, you can see that dynamic brake on the front right there in the, uh, the little uh, yellow grab iron on the front of the of the B unit there looks very, very nice. We'll just kind of come through over the top there. Again, looks nice. You can see the air horn, the three-chime air horn on the uh, GP60M right there. Very nice. You can see the fan blades uh, inside the fans there. And those are those actually are see-through, by the way. Um, so that's that's really, really nice. So, and then, of course, you can get a really good look at the blackened out fans, fan grills on the uh, radiator fans. So, yeah, very, very nice looking engines. So, what we're going to do, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, take these out to the layout. Um, I probably won't do it tonight because it's, like, really dark outside. And I don't think my lights will uh, light up good enough to really show them. So, uh, I think tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit cooler day. Um so uh, we'll do the uh, we'll do the test run when the lighting's a little better. So uh, we'll be right back and we'll do the test run. Hey guys, me from the future. Uh, when I did the uh, operations video, I uh, plum forgot to uh, show you the two uh, different errors of these GP60Ms that I have. So uh, real quick, I'll just uh, I'll just show you this right quick. So this engine right here. This guy right here, this is the uh, the initial release Atherton had from way back in 2003. Um, and of course on the, uh, on the, on the uh, left side of your screen right here, uh, this, is, uh, this is the subject of our uh, retro review right here. But uh, anyway, uh, just kind of show you some of the changes they might have made. Um, not really a whole heck of a lot. The only real changes they made are right here to the snow plow. You, uh, you notice it's got a... Uh, a much more detail and I'll turn the light on where you can see that a little better but you can see right there it's got a much more detailed snow plow than uh, than this guy has right here uh, this one here actually has the uh, little doors open right here where you can stick the MU cables through here this one doesn't it has a lot more solid uh, it's got the little outlines for the little doors right there but uh, they're it's all molded one piece right there so uh, that's one of the changes. Uh, grab irons are painted a, a different color versus the uh, the 2003 release. Uh, these are red. Uh, these are black right here. Uh, now as we come over the top, I'll show you. And th this is probably one of the bigger changes that you'll see. Uh, notice on this locomotive, and by the way, you might could just barely see it. Uh, that's actually the BNSF version, the uh, 2003. 
uh, release that you see sitting here. So uh, that's the uh, that's the BNSF red and silver, and uh, this is of course the uh, as delivered Santa Fe. Uh, so one thing you'll notice uh, notice how the red comes way back here, almost to the right at the exhaust hatch right here. Whereas on the uh, on the 2003 the BNSF release the uh, red uh, ends just right behind the cab and you have your yellow stripe right here so uh, I'm not totally sure if this is uh, prototypical or not if this is a change that BNSF did to these engines uh, uh, after they uh, lettered them uh, relayered them for the uh, newly merged railroad or if uh, this was a uh, an error on Atherton's part at the time uh, so it, uh, that might be something to look into um, but anyway, you can kind of see the two, uh, the two models here. Of course, remember this engine's about a decade and a half older than this one is. So, um, there, there's obviously going to be some differences here. Uh, you notice the red's a little, a little lighter on this engine compared to this one. Of course, this one here hasn't has a uh, charmed of a life as this newer guy here. So, uh, that could also play a factor in it. Uh, you notice the window glazing, uh, isn't as uh, clear as on this one again that's partly due because of age but uh, still yet that is kind of worth noting uh, other than that the details are fairly similar on these engines uh, we'll just kind of take a flight over the top of them real quick uh, just kind of show you uh, there's the exhaust hatch on both models the dynamic brake of course you notice they're painted silver now this is uh, where it kind of changes a little bit you notice there's a the air horns are a little different. Again, uh, that may or may not be prototypical with the paint scheme um, featured here on the older BNSF uh, version versus the as delivered Santa Fe. Um, so, uh, but other than that, it looks very, very nice on here. Um, come back to the back. Of course, right here you see. Uh, the Santa Fe model here has uh, the blackened out uh, radiator fan grills, while the uh, BNSF version, uh, the 2003 release, has the silver uh, painted uh, radiator fans. Now, like I said uh, in the review, uh, this was something that, um, that varied on the GP60 models. Some of these had the, uh, had the silver fan... Uh, fan grills while others had the uh, blackened out fan grills in fact i think uh there's even some cases where the uh, dynamic brake fan grill was also blackened out so um it, i i guess it uh, varied from model to model um so that that's kind of interesting right there so uh, we'll uh we'll spin both these guys whoops I accidentally hit that gondola there so we'll spend both these guys around here and let you guys get a look at the uh, rear end of them so just to kind of let you guys get a look here really not much difference in in uh, in the looks of them uh they're pretty sporadically uh, uh pretty sparsely detailed uh locomotives uh just your basic um early ready to roll uh, you do have your grab irons right here on each model uh, looks good the uh, one and a half volt incandescent bulbs um, so yeah all that looks really really good and uh, also one thing you'll notice here too uh, this engine here has uh, I uh, swapped the uh, McHenry's out for uh, KD couplers now um, I believe back in the day uh, and on this 2003 model, they actually came out with Bachmann couplers uh, at the time. They used uh, Bachmann Easy Make couplers as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the uh, the McHenry couplers. I believe these appeared about a year or two later, uh, right around 2004. Or so, um, so yeah, actually, uh, actually, this older model would have had uh, Bachmann Easy Mates on it. So, uh, but as you Obviously, plenty of C. It's got KD-158s on it. So, uh, anyway, just kind of wanted to show you that real quick. Difference between the uh, 2003 and the 2016 release. 
or actually, actually no, this wouldn't be the 2016 release. I actually looked at the box. This would be somewhere around uh, 2012 or 2013. So, uh, according to the box, so I think I said 2016 earlier, uh, but that's actually incorrect. That's actually uh, uh, right around the 2012 to 2014 ish uh, time frame. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you guys the two uh, the two generations of the same model here. So. Got 2003 right here, uh, 20, let's say 2013 on this model. So, um, so yeah, just kind of wanted to show you guys that. But other than that, not really a whole lot of difference between the two. Details are pretty similar, right there. So, okay, just wanted to show you that. On to the test. Okay, we got these engines out now. We're ready to take them for their test. Show you how they do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this light off so you can see the headlights work. So, whoops, let me, let me push that back. So, okay, so I'm going to flip the direction switch. And there you go, they got headlights right there on the GP60M and the B unit right there. Looks very, very good, nice and smooth running we'll run them up here just a little bit and then we'll flip them to reverse you can see the headlight on on that engine on the b unit and the rear headlight on the gp60m and very very smooth performance on these engines they run very very nicely so yeah so what do you say we uh, close this video out and we'll get them on a train and uh, see how they do run around the layout. So hang on just a second. We'll be right back. Okay, we got them running on a train right now. They're running really, really nicely. Uh, they're cooking around the layout pretty good right there. So very, very smooth engines. Uh, Atherin's always had good performing locomotives. Um, these are no different. Uh, they're... They're real classics, so uh, red and silver paint looks good. Santa Fe paint scheme looks great on it. So, yeah, uh, these these were really, really good engines. Um, I hope if the tooling's not beyond repair or anything like that, that Athens can re-release these in the future because they're really cool engines. Um, and they run really, really nice, too. So, all right, guys, that'll take care of the review on these engines. Uh, we hope you enjoyed these little retro reviews. Uh, we got more coming down the pike, so yeah, stay tuned all. Uh, more fun stuff coming, so we'll see you next time. Take care all. Bye for now.